BHD Army. It is your boy Blasphemous HD. And today we're here to watch a video a lot of you guys have asked me to watch. It's called 14 Actors You May Not Know Are Dead. God Jesus. Me, myself, man, I tend to think that I'd like to keep up on a whole lot of actors. I don't know why it really bothers me when like some of my favorite actors pass away. In my own brain, I've formed relationships with these people, non-sexual ones. Uh, with these people based on the movie roles that they've taken that I really enjoy watching them in. But with that being said, if you guys want to watch the original video in its entirety as we tend to chop parts out, the link is in the description down below. Let go. This video is, of course, by Looper. Make sure to go check them out, subscribe, all of the good stuff. 14 actors you may not know are dead. When we watch celebrities at the movies or on TV, we develop special bonds with them. So when they're gone too soon, it can be devastating, especially when we don't realize we've lost them. You may not know some of these actors by name, but you certainly know their faces. Some of your favorite movies or shows feature actors that have been- The Yellow Ranger is dead? What? Lee Thompson Young. The famous Jet Jackson, Lee Thompson Young's star vehicle, was a very popular show on the Disney Channel for some time. Friday Night Lights, Aquila and the Bee, and The Hills Have Eyes 2 are so- Man, I love this dude in all of his acting roles. And I remember where I was when I saw the Facebook post that he had unfortunately taken his own life due to depression and stuff. I was like, fuck. You know, and it's really crazy too because, you know what I mean? Like, we tend to think, like, how can someone with such a bright future with so many people who love them. Got hazel eyes, he's good looking and all this good shit, you know what I mean? Like Pauls and whatnot. Even though he has all this stuff, to him, he's always had it, so it's not a big deal. So he doesn't look at it in the same eyes that we do. None of the stuff that I've mentioned helps to take away from your personal problems or demons or, you know, possible depression, anything like that, you know? So, people I feel the worst for is his family members, yo. Because, you know, he more than likely was like the star of his entire family. Everyone loved him. And it was super sudden, yo. Brittany Murphy. After rising to fame in 1995's cult classic Clueless with the famous line, You're a virgin who can't drive. Brittany Murphy offered strong performances in Girl Interrupted, Drop Dead Gorgeous, 8 Mile, and Sin City. And had a regular role on the hit animated show, King of the Hill. Murphy was declared dead on December 20th, 2009, due to pneumonia, anemia, and multiple drug intoxication. Damn! It's unclear whether toxic mold also played a part in her untimely death at age 32, as her husband was found dead in the same house five months later. Heather O'Rourke. God damn! Best known for playing Carol Ann from the movie Poltergeist, Heather O'Rourke was the sweet young girl that terrified audiences after being sucked into the television set. Yeah, man, that, that was literally the original scary movie, man. Fuck that. I remember when I was young, up until a long time, I would not leave my TV on at night because of this movie. And Static still kind of scares me. A little bit. Not a lot of bit. You know what I mean? If I wake up in the middle of the night, my TV's on and it's static -y, I know I didn't turn it on, I piss my pants. It's not, it's not big. It's not a big deal. She was also one of a very small number of original cast members that remained with the movie series until Poltergeist 3. If you've seen the final movie, you will notice Heather's cheeks are very puffy, a reaction to the medication she was taking for Crohn's disease, with which she was misdiagnosed. Tragedy struck when Heather suffered from cardiac arrest in February 1988 while undergoing a surgery for bowel obstruction at the tender age of 12. Dominique Duffro. Damn! Skyrocketing to fame at age 11, Brad Renfro made a huge impression on audiences after starring in Joel Schumacher's adaptation of The Client by John Grisham. High-profile roles followed, and he made appearances in Sleepers opposite Brad Pitt, Ghost World alongside Scarlett Johansson, and The Informers starring Kim Basinger. Renfro fulfilled the sad destiny of many child actors, plunging into a life of illegal drug use and trouble with the law. After trying to buy drugs from an undercover L.A. police officer in 2006, Renfro pled no contest to attempted possession of heroin and spent 10 days in jail. On January 15, 2008, at 25 years old, Brad Renfro was found dead of an accidental heroin and morphine overdose. Jonathan Brad- Damn it! No, not Jonathan Bradness! 
Jonathan Brandis. Damn it! I used to watch all of this dude's stuff when I was a young person. Y'all remember that one show that was a huge ripoff of like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Where he would turn into, you go into like a computer and shit, be a side. I used to watch all of this shit. Oh my god, no. And that one movie with Chuck Norris. I forgot what it's called, but that shit was my shit. Where he was just like a, a bullied ass kid and he learned martial arts and started fucking everybody up and then beat up a whole bunch of motherfuckers at the tournament and he was doing the nunchuck shit. Y'all remember that shit, dude? Damn. I used to watch all of this dude's shit. With a resume as long as your arm, Jonathan Brandis showed up in Who's the Boss, Blossom, L.A. Law, Full House, The Wonder Years, and Murder, She Wrote, among tons of others. As a child and teenage star for many years, it seemed like he had no shortage of work. He was 16 when he made Ladybugs, and 17 when he was cast as a teen genius in Steven Spielberg's Sequest 2032. When Sequest was canceled in 1996, however, the once plentiful casting offers dried up. Depression soon plagued the young star. He died after sustaining injuries from an attempted suicide via hanging at the age of 27 in Danbury, Connecticut. You see it all the time though, like some of the most entertaining and funny comedian people, you know what I mean, or people who are in the public eye and actors and whatnot, they usually suffer from depression. And that's one of the biggest things I'm thankful for, man, is that I do not have that. I'm so thankful for that, man. God, jeez. Dana Plato. Playing Kimberly Drummond in the television series Different Strokes, Dana Plato was catapulted to instant stardom alongside Gary Coleman and Todd Bridges. To cope with the mounting pressures of fame, she often indulged in cocaine and marijuana offset. Once she became pregnant, however, the network released her from her contract and she began a downward spiral of drugs and alcohol that included work in adult films and a spread in Playboy magazine. Dana moved to Las Vegas where, desperate for cash, she robbed a store for less than $200 and was bonded out of jail by Vegas entertainer Wayne Newton. She died at the age of 35 on May 8, 1999, in her RV in Oklahoma after taking a fatal dose of Lortab and Valium. Lisa Robin Kelly. Kelly made audiences laugh as part of the ensemble. When did this chick die? What? No! Cast of That 70s Show but her real life wasn't funny at all. After a lengthy battle with drug and alcohol addiction that ultimately caused her to lose her job on the show, Kelly checked into rehab in August 2013, only to pass away in her sleep due to complications from an accidental overdose. She was only 43. Only 43? What the fuck? She looked so young on the fucking show, man. I thought she was like 25. Only 43? <laughs> what? Dewey Trang, best known for her work as the original Yellow Ranger on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Dewey Trang was developing what seemed like a potentially promising career after leaving the show in 1994, landing roles in Spy Hard and The Crow, City of Angels. Sadly, she never had a chance to fulfill that potential. She was killed in a car accident in 2001 at the age of 27. Damn it! Michael Clark Duncan. Damn it! Duncan's towering physique made him a natural for big guy roles, but he really had dramatic chops, as well as a beautifully sensitive starring performance in the big screen adaptation of Stephen King's The Green Mile. Duncan should have had a much longer career, but he was felled by a heart attack in 2012 at the age of 54. He was 54? God damn, black don't crack. Shit, I thought it was like 30 or something. Black does not crack. No, man, not the Ghostbusters, dude. Harold Ramis. Known best for playing the role of Egon in Ghostbusters, Ramis was 70 when he passed away from an autoimmune disease in 2014. Though he enjoyed a long and productive career, Fans the world over know he was still taken far too soon. I still thought he was younger, you know, because I hadn't seen him do much of anything after uh, Ghostbusters. So, 70s is not, not horrible. Andy Hallett. A Buffyverse fan favorite for his work as the demon Lorne in the spin-off series Angel, Andy Hallett seemed to be on the verge of a fruitful career in Hollywood. Unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 33 in 2009, the victim of congestive heart failure. Taylor Negron. Although he tended to be on screen for no more than a few moments at a time, Negron's deadpan delivery made him a standout in pictures like Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Better Off Dead, 
as well as TV shows like Seinfeld and Friends. He was only 57 when he died in early 2015, a victim of liver cancer. Rowdy Roddy Piper. After making a name for himself as a professional wrestler, I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. That set the tone for a busy Hollywood career full of B-movie roles and small but unforgettable appearances on shows like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He died in his sleep in 2015 after suffering a pulmonary embolism that triggered a heart attack at the age of 61. Thanks for watching. Dang, he was 61? Damn. Began, yeah, man. I, I saw some of those coming, very few. I knew Michael Clark was, had already passed away. And I already knew the Jet Jackson actor had passed away as well. But ah, a lot of those people, I did the that 70s show chick, I, I didn't even know she was 43. God damn, she looked good for her age, man. She was playing like a 19-year-old. A lot of those people I didn't know passed away, man. That's crazy. Yo, if you guys want to watch the original video, the link is in the description down below. It leads to Looper's channel. Make sure to go check them out, subscribe to them. It's a good idea that you watch it on their channel. As you guys already know, we tend to chop parts out. Use a blast and say D. Twist.